For all y'all who think that lights don't make a difference, here we are. Let's turn on my ring light, even though my eyes can't stand it. Oh look, that made a difference. A huge one actually. This one may not make as much of a difference because the window's wide open. But there you go. Let's get started. Do, do, do. Watch me whip. Watch me crochet. Watch me knit, knit. Watch me yay. It's Whip Wednesday. Hey there, Soul Shines. It's Michelle here, and it is Whip Wednesday. Recorded on a Tuesday. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to make progress on some of the things, but um, not yet. I have, I have though. Oh, I forgot to bring something over. I started today, because, you know, it was time to put on some things. My hair is driving crazy. Um, I've been working on the multivalence, and today I started and went probably almost a fourth of the way around on the last round for the 11th clue. So I have two and a half rounds left until the blanket is completely done. I should hopefully have the clue 11 done and I reveal two or three showing up on Saturday because that this last round is going to be super fast. Let's just pray I don't run out of yarn. It's going to be close. Well, since my phone is going off and it is six feet away, but also next to the project I didn't bring, I'm going to go get that. As I was sitting back down, I realized why I'm feeling so scrunched. The last person to use this space was my son on his call this morning. So, um, let me unscrunch myself a little bit. All right, a little less scrunchy. Um, but my rocking chair sometimes makes noise and that's kind of frustrating. So let's talk works in progress since it's Whip Wednesday. Um, I have oh so far on my tiny little sock. I do have the first row of eyelids done. I don't know if you can see that. They're kind of there. They'll show up a lot better once the next row is in as they start to get more rows and it shows up. Um, this time, because I'm following the rules, other than I made my um, ribbing much shorter than they said, I cut it in about half. So you're supposed to do like 20 stitches of stocking net or approximately that with whatever pattern you're using if it's possible. And so I'm going to do um, six of these pattern repeats and it's a four row repeat. So that will give me 24. So that extra four stitches will kind of make up for the difference on the shorter thing. So um, yeah. It will, it's gonna be so pretty. And my goal is to have this done by tomorrow if possible. I can if I sit down and do it. That I know is possible. Um, because I have an appointment tomorrow and I want to make it to the appointment. Take it to the appointment. I wanna give it to my counselor. Um, she loves them and I just think it would be really fun. I have not made any progress on this, but I really need to make progress on this for my mental health. Um, so I have a bowl. It is not flat on the bottom. Because I was using a smaller hook, I should have done one less increase. But it's okay because it's just going to sit on the table. So if I have it kind of concave, then it can sit on the table. It's mostly half double crochets. It's got, I know that lighting is super bright over there. Nope, that's the bright side. Um, so then it's got star stitches right along in here. And then on the top, it's got the first row of a heart star stitch and it's not woven in. But I thought it looked really pretty as kind of the top of a border without finishing it, so I didn't finish it. What I'm going to put in this is my rose petals. They're supposed to be nine rose petals altogether, three large ones, three medium ones, and three small ones. I have three large ones, one medium one, 
and not much of a medium one. <laughs> so um, I do want to try to get for sure one rose petal done today, hopefully two. I really want to get this finished. Um, so that is a decoration that I'm going to be putting in my kitchen because I'm trying to make the kitchen feel more like my space. It's something I've realized I've struggled with for as long as I can remember. There was something always that felt off limits about a kitchen, even when it was my own. Like, honestly, can I tell you? I've been thinking about my adult life. So when I first got married, we moved into the place my mom had been living at. My mom was there for like two or three months when we first got married. So the first two or three months we lived with my mom. Then she moved away and we had that place for six months. And um, so I was able to kind of make it my own then. Uh, then we have lived with people while I was married, I lived with people except for four years. I had an apartment where we had our own apartment for four years. That was the closest to feeling ownership of, an, of a kitchen that I've ever had. Um, and part of the reason why, even though I don't live with anybody besides my kids now, is um, we lived here for 14 years. My mom passed away four years ago, so my mom was a part of that. It was her kitchen. It was always her kitchen and most of my dishes were packed away. One of the first things that happened after she died was an attempt to try to take the kitchen into a little more control and um, declutter a bunch of stuff as well as pull out my stuff and then kind of try to get a balance of here's some of the stuff that was mine that's been in storage, here's some of her stuff and kind of get a balance of it. And so for the most part was doing okay but I realized that I just, it's its a room that doesn't have my mark on it. The bathroom has my mark on it. Um, I bought a new shower curtain, it's butterflies. Ah. I got little fairy garden display stuff to put up in there. The bathroom feels like my space. The front room, I was able to get new rugs to put out. Um, all the furniture has transitioned one way or another, I think. There might be one thing that was there when my mom was there, but I might have gotten it just before she passed away. But we've got, you know, we've, I'll, it's, it's, it feels more like my space. Um, it's not perfect. It's not ideal. I definitely want some changes in there, but it feels like my space. Um, but the kitchen never has. And so a part of creating this decoration is putting that mark in the room. Um, I value beauty. I didn't know that until this week. Um, I was doing some journaling about my home and I realized, wow, beauty is actually really important to me. And I thought about it throughout the years and it's like it always was. When I was a little girl, I was so disappointed that I didn't get the kind of room that I wanted. I had, there was a holly hobby bed covering thing. It wasn't a bed, it was just a uh, like almost like a sheet that you laid over the top to decorate and um, curtains and I wanted a canopy. Never got that. And then the dog chewed up my blanket thingy. But I remember even as a little girl I had a dream of what I wanted my room to look like. That's interesting for me to become aware of and now this is a part of why this rose basket is so important to me is because it's a part of my saying this is my space. I get to make it look like my space as best as I can under the circumstances. It's not like I can go replace all the furniture and paint the walls. I really hate this color, guys. This wall color is throughout my place. I've lived with it 14 years. I hated it the day we moved in. That's just sometimes the life of a renter. You just deal with what you can. <sighs> Sorry if um, some of you don't care for when I go off like that. I'm going to try my little editing genius again and put a crochet hook in and say, hey, hook that subscribe button. I think that's really fun. I got this going. I was like, you know, I have some gorgeous stuff that I want to make shawl with. I know what pattern I want to use. It was actually a pattern that 
I found from Shannon of Another Yarn. I have the Vortex shawl that I definitely want to do. I think my yarn might still actually be here by me, but that's okay. Definitely want to do the Vortex shawl. There's a sweater I want to make with some yarn that somebody just gave me. And I'm like, all the things I want to do, all the things. Oh yeah, and the, the hoodie scarf thing that I'm planning to make. But I was like, my friend was talking about the St. Patrick's Day stuff she did. St. Patrick's Day is like right up there with favorites. St. Patrick's Day and Christmas. If you ask me what my favorite holidays are, it's St. Patrick's Day and Christmas. The rest of them, I'm like, mm. I like the meaning of Easter. Um, I still have some trauma around Easter because my mom her last Easter with us she was in the hospital and it was just a very traumatic experience and that trauma still shows up every April so I still have, so I have some trauma around Easter so it dropped for me but I love the meaning of it but Christmas and St. Patrick's Day those are my favorite holidays and so I was given this yarn as a part of the mystery yarn challenge and I used some of it but I knew from the moment I saw it I'm like that, my babes, is a St. Patrick's Day shawl waiting to happen. So here we go. And I'm just making it up as I go. I wanted, they're not equal. Um, these two sides are equal. These two sides are equal. I wanted something that was a little more than a half shawl. I wanted it to just kind of drape over my shoulders. And so, um, I mean, I don't know if I'll like it. I've never tried it. I've seen them and I was like, I want to try it. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna try it, and I just kind of am making it up. I always go. Um, so I wanted it to have. There's four sections. I still want a triangle at the back, and then these triangles on the side, and then um, I. So these two sections are a little bit shorter than these two sections, and but the whole thing is symmetrical because you know that's. That's how you do, unless you choose not to do. Um, but I'm really excited about this. I just decided I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it up as I go. It's probably going to be pretty darn simple. And that's okay. It's okay for me to do pretty darn simple. So. Here you have it, guys. The beginning of my St. Patrick's Day shop. That might be everything I've worked on. Sorry, I don't know what happened right now. I need a drink. One of the things I worked on is finished, so I don't get to show it today. Um, I do not have a tithing hat going on right now. I have another tithing project that we'll talk about tomorrow. Um, that is not a work in progress because that is on hold. And that hasn't been started, that hasn't been started, that hasn't been started. I have been making progress on my temperature socks. Tune in on Monday. I keep wiggling the table and my tripod is attached. It's not a tripod. It's one of the arm things that I can then tip down for. Anyway, um, it is attached to the table and I keep wiggling the table. Anyway, Monday's creative expression. It will be the first Monday of the month, and so I will be showing updates on my my temperature socks and my temperature scarf. Uh, there's a lot of things I have not started that I have on my list. I guess just to keep it in front of my face. I've talked about the multivalence and the progress it's making. So excited for that. Uh, haven't done, haven't done, haven't done, haven't done, haven't done, uh, haven't done, haven't done, showed you that see like so many things that I don't know it's really interesting to think about how people work on things Shannon of another yarn just picks up whatever she feels like for the most part sometimes you have a little bit of pressure from other places I don't feel like it's so much pressure from them it's just the little extra pressure she puts on herself to meet them. I don't know. That's how it works for me. So I just assume that's how it works for her. I'm sorry if I assumed wrong. That is not cool of me. I'm so sorry. 
Um, what was I gonna say? I don't think my lights are on. Squirrel moment. Sometimes I just pick on what, pick up whatever I'm working on and I just go with the mood. Other times I kind of push myself to work on things for reasons. Um, it is super easy on Sundays for me to pick up my socks and crochet or knit, sorry, they're knitted, knit my two rounds for the week, my colored round and my other round. I'm really excited about the socks. I'm loving how they're turning out. So it's really easy to pick it up and work on it every Sunday. The temperature scarf. I'm like, why am I doing this? I don't even like the project. I don't know. Maybe it will turn out okay. Right now I'm like, oh, don't love the colors. I've never been one for the like the full on bright colors unless it's like a rainbowy thing that's um black and you've got that contrast. So I'm just looking at it. I just I force myself, guys. Why? I can frog that and just say, you know, interesting idea, not doing it. But I've here we are towards the end of February and I keep forcing myself. I think I'm going to spend some time with that and reevaluate it because if I'm not enjoying the project, why am I doing it? I am pushing myself on the multivalence because I really wanted to finish it this month. And I'm doing it for the mystery yarn challenge and for things we're making Thursday and because I just really want the blanket. So I push myself to work on it when I'm not necessarily in the mood for it just because I know that I will be so thrilled with it when it's done. Right now, because that is such a big project, I'm not getting to do as much intuitive. I feel like this would be a great thing. Anyway, it's Whip Wednesday. Hopefully I edit out a lot of this craziness from you guys because sometimes I get a little rambly. That's pretty much it, guys. Um, these are the things that are actually works in progress. I have things that are on hold. I have things that I've finished. I have things that I'm hoping to start right away. These, this is where I'm at. Anywho, remember to let your light shine through your creations, whatever they be, crochet, knit, your own pattern, somebody else's pattern, any other craft, creation, whatever. Remember to let your light shine. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.